Just do it. <laughs> You have to press down? Yeah, it helps a lot better if you put a slight amount of pressure on there. You see that ember's caught real good on top of the log now. It's starting to burn into it. Yeah. And once you get it going, you'll use this, uh, this rod to actually put down on on the fire and you blow and um, this will this will catch on fire and that'll catch on fire and it'll, you can just work it right down in there with it I mean I wonder if you just leave it will it it won't do anything no it'll just go out mm -hmm. because of getting the heat rising up off of it mm -hmm. it, it doesn't it's not going to want to burn down into it you, know, you got to force the heat into it by blowing on it You can blow it a little bit and let it rest and you know, let it work a little bit. Yeah. It's kind of a slow process and you you, you don't wanna you don't wanna work it with the fire too quick because it'll make your vessel crack. Okay. So, so you wanna let the let the heat do its work and kinda of work it a little bit, you know, slow. Yeah. It'll crack whether it's wet or dry wood? Yeah, yeah, if you if you work, if you burn it too quick it'll crack. Is this for your bed? Yeah. Your Harry Henderson bed? I'll be making canoes like this in their time. Next yeah. next weekend. <laughs> yeah, so really all you're trying to do is keep the ember burning in the log. Yeah. And once you got a, a coal seated in the log well enough, you won't need the coal anymore. So actually, you'll you'll take that uh, that plunger that you got right there, and you'll grind into the top of the log. You'll grind into it to break the break the coal that's in there loose, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll slowly just start eating the hole right down into it. You can make it as deep as you want. Amazing how hot that is. Yeah. that stick on top of it, that way the, the, the two pieces of wood will 
have something for the heat to interact with. And your, your coal will keep burning. I'm going to take this winter crest plant, which is a wild mustard, and I'm going to process some of the seeds by roasting them and grinding them up and I'm going to I'm going to boil these greens and I'm going to eat them. So, here in a little while, I'm going to uh demonstrate how to use a seed grinder to process uh some of the seed stocks that are available out in the woods. And what I'm going to use today is the seed from the wild mustard, or also known as uh, Creasy Greens, or uh, uh, all of the field guide books uh, call it winter crest. Now, there's two ways I can prepare these seeds. And the first way is to just break the pods off of the plant. Open them up. And when I get a sufficient amount of them, I can just put them in my seed grinder and grind them up green. Or yellow. These turn yellow when they're completely fully ripe. Because, yeah, it's a mustard seed. open them up. You see the little seeds right there? The little mustard seeds? These seed pods are inedible. They're they're hard like wood, although they're woody and fibrous. So you can't chew them and eat them. And you can't digest them. But the seeds inside of them are completely edible. So that's that's the food I'm going after is the the seeds. So this is gonna take a little bit of work. But it's gonna be well worth the effort. Okay, now that I've got a small amount of seed collected, uh, as you can see, when the seeds are completely ripe, they're a nice brown mustard. And yeah, these are still green, or they're, they're fresh. That's alright, it doesn't matter, they're still edible. And what I'm going to do... So I'm going to put those into my mortar and pestle. Okay, and take the pestle. And I'm going to crush them up. And that's going to release the oil from the seeds. And yeah, because they're green, they're sticking in there a little bit. I'll just scrape them out, and uh, I'm going to add this to my food tonight. And yeah, I've got a bunch more to go. Uh, let's see, that right there. There's going to be some good food. Now, the second way to prepare seeds with a seed grinder is to... Uh, lightly roast them and of course they have to be completely dry first and then you roast them and you grind them into a powder and I'm going to use some of these seeds here but I'm going to, I'm going to collect some uh, brown mustards that are uh, completely ripe and which the these seed pods are uh, bright yellow and I'm going to use those Let's go get them. Now, I've collected the 
mustard seed pods. You can see how they just turn completely yellow. And what I like to do is put them into a bag. And I'll crush them up because when they turn yellow like this, uh, the seeds fall out really easy. So I'll put them in a bag or whatever I have, uh, wrap them up in a shirt or whatever. And I'll crush them and I'll shake it like that. And all the seed will work its way to the bottom of the bag. See when I pull it out, it just leaves the empty husks attached to the stems. And yeah, I'll do this again later after this dries out a little bit and I'll get a, a little bit more seed. Now I'm taking my shirt off. And as you can see, all these husks that broke loose. I'm going to slowly start to sift through it and the seeds will fall to the bottom and the husk will come to the top. See? And I'll shake this chaff and the, the seed will fall to the bottom. The chaff, this chaffy stuff, and you just discard it. Just get rid of it like that. And then you gotta winnow the finer chaffs out of it. You can see the dust floating away and the heavy seed fall straight down to the shirt. So I'll keep doing that and I'll have to I'll have to take the seed off of this shirt and shake it out real good. You see how it's got it's just got this dust all over it. Well, I need to get that off of there. Because yeah, all I want when I'm done is uh, the seed. Take it out really well. Make sure there's nothing on it. And I'll pour my seed back on there. And then I'll just winnow the chaff out of it. You can see, I pick up the seed and the fine particles of uh, chaff drift away from the seed and the seed falls directly to the cloth below. You can see the dirt left behind. Dust, chaff, and here's the seed over here, much cleaner. Yeah, it still has some husk in it. This is almost clean enough. And the next thing that I'll do, because this is a wild seed stock, is I'll very closely inspect it to make sure that it's free of insects. And whether it is or isn't free of insects, uh, I'll lightly roast this seed. And that's why I like to lightly roast all of my uh, wild seed stocks is to, to make absolutely certain that there isn't any uh, um, bugs in it or whatever. So that's the next step. Okay, I've lightly roasted my seed. Yeah, it's still a little warm. And you just want to heat them up thoroughly. 
you don't want to really char them. And you just want to heat it up thoroughly to make sure that uh, there's nothing crawling around in there. Which these seeds were really clean. I did my visual inspection. I didn't see any insects, but I like to do the roasting anyway. And as you can see, some of the seeds are a nice reddish brown color, and some of them are darker. So what I can do now is I can put them in my mortar and pestle a little bit at a time. I don't want to put too many of them in there at a time. And crush them up. And yeah, see how it turns a nice yellow color? Yeah, this turned out to be some really good mustard seed here. Now if I wanted to make some mustard out of this, all I'd have to do is add a couple spices to it, add some vinegar to it, add some of my whole brown mustard seed to it, and kind of cook it a little bit over a stove. And I'll have some quality stone ground brown mustard. Well. This right here is ready to eat. Two methods of uh, using a simple seed grinder or mortar and pestle to uh, prepare seeds. And of course I've demonstrated mustard seed today, but um, literally any seed stock can be prepared with that method, including one of my other favorite seeds, which is a seed from uh, the yellow wood sorrel. Yeah, that's another one of my favorite seeds. So it's a good thing that the mangy bushman and I took the time to make the seed grinder. Uh, I was able to grind up those mustard seeds and uh, add those to my meal and yeah they taste really good they're, they uh, when they're fresh like that they have a little bit of a hot flavor to them and uh, I like them a lot so this tool right here is going to come in handy and uh, it's something that I'll, that I'll use a lot yeah. I gotta get my camp ready for the night. Well, as you heard, I got rained on a little bit. But that's alright, I dropped the roof on my shelter and uh, covered up my blankets and everything. I hung them from uh, the bottom of the boat so that when the water runs in underneath, it won't uh, get my stuff wet. So that'll be okay. Yeah, and that's clever. I figured while I was waiting, I would uh, carve a utensil to eat with. I'm making a spoon right here out of pine wood. And yeah, I'm not exactly done with it yet. So yeah, I still got to still got to do most of the carving on the inside of it. You just gotta make sure you have a really sharp knife or a really sharp stone. It'll shave the wood off like that. And this is a piece of pine wood. I use pine to make my utensils out of because, well, I, I like the taste of pine wood. I like the, the smell of it. I mean, it doesn't have a bad flavor to it when you, you know, eat off of it. Some woods uh, uh, really don't taste good. See, that's nigh on having a nice, sleek, slender profile. Yeah, that'll work.